Good day guys, today we're looking at trigonometry. So we're going to be looking at finding the unknown sides and angles of a right angle triangle. So a right angle triangle is one that's got a 90 degree angle in it. Um, so for this first one, what I like to start off with doing is labeling our sides. So we have the adjacent side, we have the opposite side, and we have the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side always goes adjacent to the angle. So this is going to be our adjacent side. Um, the opposite side goes opposite the angle, so it's going to be our opposite side. And the hypotenuse is the angle that's opposite the 90 degree angle. So that's always our longest side, so I'll just write it there. Okay, looking at this, we see we're using our adjacent side and our hypotenuse. So if we go over to this um, saying we have over here on mnemonic, we see that we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So we're going to be using C, which is cos. So we come over here, we can write our cos down immediately. Cos. And we can put our angle, 10, is equal to. And we can put our adjacent first, so it's going to be 5 over x. Um, rearranging this, there's a two-step rearrangement method, rearrangement method, but we can actually just swap the cos 10 and the x, and we get the same um, result. So we swap those two. Um, you'll see that we get x is equal to five over cosine cos 10. So we can simply put that in our calculator. So if we do that real quick, have it here. Um, we chuck that in the calculator, we're going to get 5 divided by cosine of 10. We get 5.077. So if I just write that over here, we'll go all round to 1D, 1DP, so we get 5.1, and obviously if there were units, you'd put the units in, whether they're meters, but we don't have any units in this question. Um, and if you want, you can chuck a little 1DP, just to show you around to one decimal place. Um, and just checking this answer, this answer, we see that the angle is pretty small, and that means this isn't this opposite side isn't going to be very large, um, and therefore this x is probably only just going to be bigger than five. So yeah, seems that our answer is correct. I'm moving down to the next one. I'm going to change my color up for this one. I'm going to go purple because that's better. Um, again, we need to be labeling our sides. So actually, I'll label in black and then I'll write in purple. So this is going to be our hypotenuse once again. It is opposite to that 90 degree angle that we have right here. Uh, this is going to be our opposite side. So opposite the angle. This is our adjacent side. So getting into it, we can bring that, quickly bring our Sokatoa down with us, so we know what we're doing. Come down with us, there we go. So, this time we are working with our opposite and our hypotenuse. So, we can quickly underline the ones we're using here, we're using opposite and hypotenuse, so we're going to be using sine this time. So I'll get my purple, and we'll get into it. So, sine, we can write our sine down. It's a terrible S, oh well. And we got angle of 20 this time. 20. And that's going to be equal to our opposite, which is Y, divided by our hypotenuse, which is 10 in this case. Now, this one's different from the one we had above, where we had x on the bottom, now it's on the top. So, in order to solve for y, 
we simply just have to multiply both sides by 10. Now, if we multiply, by, multiply both sides by 10, multiply this side by 10, and this side by 10, we will see that, I'll get a different color, uh, that's going to cancel out with this, so we're just going to leave with y on this side, and this is simply just going to be sine 20 times 10. So you'll see it as I write it out in the next line, 10 times sine of 20 equals y. So now we can put that in our calculator. If I get my calculator back up now. Um, so if we go sine of 20 and my bracket on it times 10 we'll see we get 3.42 so we'll round to 3.4 it's 1 dp again so y equals 3.4 i'll leave the 1 dp out this time but you can put it in if you want um and does that seem right well again we've got a small angle um, and therefore, this is y is likely to be pretty small compared to 10. So that seems to be right. Um, moving down now, um, if you have any questions, make sure you drop them down in the comments and I'll reply to them. Um, so this next one, uh, yeah, why not change the color again? Why not? Um, Oh, we'll bring our, oh, you guys remember the soccer tower now? We can try one without it. Um, so we've got our angle here. We'll label our sides. So we've got, I'll label this one in black there. Our opposite here. We've got our adjacent here. And we've got our hypotenuse here. This is obviously our 90 degree angle. So, um, Sokatoa, thinking about it, we've got our opposite and our adjacent, so so isn't going to work, ka isn't going to work, but toa, OA, will work, so that means we'll be using tan this time. So if we go tan, and our angle is P, so when we're solving for the angle this time, so what we can do, we can just put a little negative one here. And put our p in brackets and that is equal to uh, our opposite so it's going to be four over three three if you can, there we go okay so this means that our p value is equal to the inverse tan or tan negative one Of 4 divided by 3 so 4 over 3 okay so if we put that in our calculator once again we will find that we get in our inverse function this time 10 so it's also called arc 10 but your calculators won't show that um, it'll just go 10 negative 1 most likely um, and you get 53.13 so 53.1 we'll write because we'll just round to 1 dp 53.1 this time we do have units that degrees um, okay so we can think about whether that is accurate um, we know that if both these sides are the same we'll get a 45 degree angle um, so if I had a triangle down here, that's very rough, but, oh shoot, I should really make the same sides. I'll try that again. Yeah, and about there. So if that was the same length for both, still doesn't look like the same, but oh well. Um, then this angle here would be 45. 
So say that was 1 and that was 1, or if it was 5 and 5, then that would be 45. We have 3 and 4, so it should be pretty close to 45, and it's 53.1, so that makes sense. Um, we'll move on to the next one now. Oh, wrong thing. There we go. Okay, so last one. Um, this one is going to be using, we're not going to be using Sokato this time. We're going to be using a different equation. And if you can think of that equation right now, try to think of it. Um, it is actually a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'll write that here. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is a pretty awesome equation. It basically, if we know two sides of a right angle triangle, we can find the third using this equation. Um, so to start off, we're going to go and label our sides. We label them slightly differently. These two shorter sides, uh, A and B, doesn't matter which way you put them, but this longer side, the one opposite the right angle, is always going to be C. So we know this one's C. This one can be A or B, but we'll just call it A. We'll call this one B. Now all we have to do is substitute in the equation. We know A is 4, so we'll put 4 in. 4 squared plus B is 3. 3 squared. Oh, that's a terrible 2. I'm going to redo that because that's terrible. 2. Still not great, but well, equals c squared. Now, from here, you could just go take another step to it and go c is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, and I'll write that out 4 squared plus 3 squared um but that could get a bit complicated but we'll, we'll go through it real quick and then we'll try the other way just to simplify it um so and then we can calculate what's inside the brackets so four squared is 16 and three squared is nine so 16 plus nine uh, that equals the square root of 25. And if you know your square roots, you'll see that that is equal to 5. The other way, um, you can simply just do this part first, the part we did inside the square root here. So we know that's 16, and we know that's um, 9, so we have 25 if we add those together. Oh, that's. I'll try that again. 25 equals c squared. And then you can just square root it from there. So c is equal to the square root of 25. And that's equal to 5. Um, so that's, we'll just do, I'm going to add one more in here because I think it's important. So I'm going to take this and we're going to control copy B and move it down to here. And we're going to quickly just do one more, but we're going to change the values. So I'm going to get rid of that, that, and that. I'm going to delete this one. And then we're going to move this W to here, this W to here, and we're going to make this one equal 5 here, and we're going to try to solve for W this time. So, um, oh sorry, in this last one we did, C is equal to 5, but that means since C and W are the same side, 
we can chuck um, w equals 5. That's in this top one. Um, but scrolling down to this one. Um, so we got our equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, what color should I use? I'll use purple to finish it off. Um, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, we know this side here is c again because it's the longer side. We know this can be a or b. We'll call it b. We know that this side here is a. Um, therefore, we can see that we're, we want to find the, the length b. So we can rearrange this equation. b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Um, and we can just substitute in and solve. Um, so we'll just do that real quick. So we have c is 5, 5 squared minus 3 squared. And we know 5 squared is 25, and we know 3 squared is 9. So we go 25 minus 9. We're going to get 16 is equal to b squared. And then if b squared equals 16, then we know b equals the square root of 16. Square root 16, which is actually just equal to 4. So there's a couple examples of trigonometry. Um, if you have any questions, chuck them in the comments. That should be mostly all you need to know for basic trigonometry.